the introduction of the uh, ultra deep hyaluronic acid fillers such as Tiocial Ultra Deep or Restylane Sub Q have enabled cheek filling to be very very satisfying. The first technique is to mark out the cheek and if you make a little line that runs from the top of the ear through to the bottom of the nose and then take a second line that runs from the lateral iris vertically downwards where those two lines cross is nearly always close to the central point of where the center of the cheek uh, filler should be. And you can confirm this by just gently putting your thumb on the cheek and lifting. And you can see that you want the filler tip or that you want the tip of the needle that's injecting the filler to put the majority of the filler about three quarters right at that point and then a little bit less laterally and a little bit less still further laterally. So in order to be able to fill those three areas from one injection point, the injection point needs to be in a position to fan such that the tip of the needle can reach those three points safely. The same position is marked on the other side and I always get my patients to look in the mirror and agree with me that this is the position that they would like their cheeks to be enhanced. I think this is a very important step. What's surprising is the consistency of this point. Obviously you don't normally draw in all these extra bits uh, but with a dry wipe marker you can put them in when you first start using cheek filler and then you can wipe them off simply with a damp cloth. Here for the stage of the injection I've wiped off the other marks. So checking where I want the tip of the filler to be, I tuck in and this is a deep injection. Okay. So you slide in gently and then sit and wait and do not inject at this point. If you see any evidence of bruise starting to form then you may have hit a vessel. However, if there's no evidence of any bleeding, then slowly start to inject and you'll see the cheek slowly start to lift. This injection is quite tender and it's important to let your patients know that they will feel the expansion pressure. In terms of hierarchy of pain, I think this injection is actually a little bit more painful than tear trough filler and more painful than nasolabial filler, um, but slightly less painful than filling the lips. Uh, currently I use local anaesthetic for the lips, but uh, mostly don't use any local anaesthetic in any other position unless my patients specifically request it. So roughly half this 1mm uh, syringe has now been injected at this first point and I need to inject a little bit more and then it will swing round and deliver the next 2.5mm uh, to the middle point and then the last mill and a half to the last. By pulling backwards and fanning round you should be able to do all this through one injection site and consequently minimise your risk of uh, bruising your patient. You can see the cheek now is starting to realise some definition. As, the, as you fan round I think it can be a little tender. And there you go, there's a nice little ow. <laughs> And I think for fairness I haven't edited that out. And you can see the tip of the needle fans round and the last little bit of filler is injected. As a general rule, to get any visible effect you'll need at least one mil on each side. And to get a more striking effect, two mils each side. I personally like to start with one mil and then see what my patients think 
And the immediacy of fillers, of course, means that the patients can say whether they want more. This massaging and moulding is a very satisfying part as well as the cheek filler. One of the best techniques is to pinch with your thumb and, and forefinger at the bottom and place your other finger at the top just to achieve the shape that you wish. All that remains then is to repeat on the other side.